Hello everybody and welcome to Creation Myths. Today we are going to tackle the myth that Neanderthals are descended from Homo sapiens in five minutes or less, I hope. The creationist claim here is that Neanderthals were descended from Homo sapiens. This leads to a specific prediction from young Earth creationists that if you do the phylogenetics, Neanderthals, shown in red, are going to be nested within the blue Homo sapiens clade. And according to young Earth creationists, this root represents Adam and Eve. This is in contrast to the evolutionary prediction, which is that Neanderthals are the sister group to Homo sapiens, and they share a common ancestor that was neither Neanderthal nor Homo sapiens. The problems here for creationists are first that Neanderthals are in fact the sister group to, not part of, the Homo sapiens clade, and we can see that very clearly right here, where the Neanderthals are a separate clade related to, but not within, the Homo sapiens clade. So the creationist prediction? Incorrect. The second problem for young Earth creationists is that Neanderthals violate the creationist most recent common ancestor dates if they are in fact descended from Homo sapiens. Young Earth creationists require recent common ancestors within the last 6,000 years or so. Now, this is wrong even before you consider Neanderthals. The Homo sapiens mitochondrial most recent common ancestor, for example, existed between 60 and 200,000 years ago. But let's assume that's not the case. Let's assume that this Homo sapiens most recent common ancestor was just 6,000 years ago. Well, once you add the Neanderthals to the mix, you've increased the amount of diversity you have to account for, which means you're pushing your most recent common ancestor too far into the past to be compatible with young Earth most recent common ancestor dates. The main creationist response to these problems is that Neanderthals were hypermutating. The problem here is that this actually creates more issues than it solves. Now, the first problem is that based on available genomes, Neanderthals had less genetic diversity than extant Homo sapiens. So they were actually inbred rather than super diverse, which is what we would expect based on hypermutation. Hypermutation also doesn't solve the nesting problem. Neanderthals should still fall within the Homo sapiens clade. They just have longer branches indicating the greater degree of mutation accumulation. So the revised creationist prediction, still wrong. But wait, there is more. Creationists have a new excuse. It's only the Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA that shows hypermutation. Inbreeding in the nuclear genome is going to mask that hypermutation. You can see this uh, coming from, for example, Standing for Truth, a prominent young Earth YouTuber. He tries to explain the difference, though, has to do with the nature of the nuclear genome, with the assumption of created heterozygosity, another bat poop crazy idea that'll tackle separately. Uh, the Neanderthals have millions and millions of created differences. That means that although the entire genome is experiencing hypermutation, the uniparentally inherited DNA would exhibit the largest effect. The extra mutations in the biparentally inherited DNA, i.e. the nuclear genome, although there, would be virtually undetectable. So now we have a new prediction. Two distinct trees, one for mitochondria and one for the nuclear DNA, and they should look different. So here is creation's prediction take three. We have the Neanderthal nuclear DNA, which is highly inbred and nested within the Homo sapiens clade. And we have the hypermutated Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA, still nested within the Homo sapiens clade, but with longer branches reflecting the greater number of mutations. Surprise, surprise, this is still wrong. The mitochondrial and nuclear DNA trees have the same branch lengths relative to each other and relative to Homo sapiens which means there's no hypermutation. And you can see both of these trees right here. We've got the nuclear DNA right here. We've got the mitochondrial DNA right here. No evidence of hypermutation in either tree. And I do also want to note right here that this argument concedes the most recent common ancestor problem for the inbred parts of the genome. So thank you for that, creationists. So to summarize, young Earth creationists claim that Neanderthals are descended from Homo sapiens. This is contradicted by all available genetic data. Neanderthals are the sister group to Homo sapiens, not nested within them. They have less genetic diversity, not more. They violate the young Earth most recent common ancestor timeline. And there's no evidence of genome-wide or region-specific hypermutation. One final note here, this was all covered in my debate with Standing for Truth on this topic, which is linked in the description, uh, a debate which was prompted when Standing for Truth wanted to respond to my original video on this topic, also linked down below. Since that debate, SFT has revised his arguments without actually addressing mine, and I don't have anything to add to what I said in the debate and have restated here. This is I'm not telling anybody anything new, I'm just putting it all in one place under this five-minute myth format. 
So if SFT or anyone else wants to actually address these arguments, then I might have more to say. But for now, the arguments stand on their own, and nobody has even really tried to refute them. So, are Neanderthals descended from Homo sapiens? No, that is a creation myth. Thank you for watching, and as always, don't get fooled.